This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, March 31st, last day of the month, 2022, left 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tomorrow night we will have a reverse aging health call, special guest Michael Thomas, inventor, creator of the Halo system, and uh, going to cover quite a few things. He's got a couple surprises for people that I think he's going to uh, announce uh, tomorrow night. So, but that'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern. All, uh, just picture what would happen if all of us lived from the heart, because our heart knows the way and will bring us peace. So we move our attention from our head to our heart, shift from thinking into feeling, and discover how simple life really is. The heart simply loves whatever comes its way. The heart simply loves whatever comes its way. And you'll know when you, you know when you drop into the heart, okay? You don't care to go way low into the body, but you, you know, the heart center, the heart mind. And you can tell when you know you, you leave the head, go into the heart. And it's a practice that you can do. Just keep focusing on moving into the heart and being coming from the heart mind and not the ego mind. And you just re- you constantly remind yourself, is it where am I at? Am I in the head or am I in the heart? Total peace begins to flow in. And it's like this light that we all have here. It's a celebration. For God's sake, for God's sake, know love directly. Enter into it and only then you will be satisfied and happy. Real love alone will make life festive. Entertainment won't. Oh, sorry. We have been put on this earth to celebrate this incredible gift called the amazing life. Okay? The amazing life. Oh. We were born to experience life in all its multidimensional ways and celebrate this miraculous being that we are. With every new day, There is something awesome to discover inside you. The world that you can see, smell, taste, hear, and touch is there to tantalize our senses, open our hearts, expand our minds, so that we find a perpetually expanding feeling of being alive. This is how we can find true divinity inside ourselves. What if your mission here was to experience as much pleasure as you can? It is, and in fact, this is the only way we can increase our vibration and manifest miracle after miracle. We weren't born to suffer endlessly. I think... I believe that most of us know this. We were not born to suffer endlessly. What would be the purpose of that? Our bodies and minds were designed to indulge in continuous waves of joy, happiness, and ecstasy. We have the physical capability of experiencing one pleasurable peak experience after the other. Humans are the only animal on earth who are multi who are multi-orgasmic. Our bodies and minds were created in such a brilliant way that there is no limit to the number of orgasms we can enjoy. There's many forms. We can choose to allow ourselves to rise in pleasure forever. We can also welcome in such overwhelming feelings of joy that tears of gratitude start pouring down our eyes. Just thinking about the happiest moments of your life, tears can come. 
Try to remember all of them as if they happened yesterday, and you'll ignite the happiest, healthiest chemical cocktail in your brain. To celebrate yourself means you are allowing in your most authentic pleasure. You know who you truly are, what you're capable of manifesting, and are constantly letting in the greatest resource of of luck. You know your unlimited potentiality and that there is nothing you cannot do with enough time, intention, and love. To get to this higher vibration takes intention and focus. Start with making a list of all the things you love about being alive. Write down all the moments you were totally blown away by life and completely astounded by how magical everything truly is. Include on this list everything that you love about yourself. This is not an egotistical list. Yet what you really appreciate about this amazing being that you are. You'll be surprised how powerful and transforming this exercise is. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines. Sail away from the safe harbor. Catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore. Dream and discover. Mark Twain. Samuel Clemens. Nothing is a coincidence in our lives. There is no coincidence. It is all a grand symphony of moments playing together, offering its favorite song to any listener passing by. If you are not truly enjoying your life to the max, Today, you have simply forgotten the purpose of your life. It just happens that we forget. We are here to celebrate who we are because we've been seduced by the outer world and all its exquisite entertainment. There are so many movies, websites, apps, games, books, shows, classes, and events where we get to sit back and be entertained without having to do a thing. We also have the habits of being constantly entertained by alcohol, drugs, and food. The truth is our Western society has become deeply lazy and completely hypnotized by everything out there. And we have forgotten the divine soul that is on the inside. We have become puppets to the world, slaves to our minds, and constantly seduced by outer forces that help us stroke our emotional heartstrings. The experience of being entertained is quite different than celebrating ourselves. This world, each other, and our lives. We are not dependent on the outer world to celebrate our inner world. We realize that our souls are the reality and the reason for celebration. From this place, we are conscious participants in life, truly being with others, always interacting and fully engaging in each living, breathing moment. We live in a constant state of feeling connected on a very deep level, which opens up, opens all of us up spiritually. In a life of entertainment, we become spectators in a game who are passive, disconnected, and more likely to become unconscious. We are constantly seeking for connection, and this makes us miss the connection that is available here and now. In this ever-seeking state, we end up withholding our love, wisdom, and creativity because we think the divinity is outside of us and not inside. We then become exhausted with looking for love outside and then end up just speculating and not participating. We watch how others are enjoying their lives, and then when we finally decide to engage with others, we often feel like a novice and as if they were separate from us. When you're living a life, when you're living this life as a celebration, you never feel separate from the world. You feel how others feel separate, yet you yourself always feel the source of connection to everything and everyone. 
it's so natural to just stand up and dance, laugh, sing, tap your feet with whatever music that is playing in the background. And a life seduced by entertainment, there is no desire to move your own body. When the music is playing, you are not in a state of awe. And listening as if it's some outside noise that cannot enter your soul. The man who has lost the power of wonder is a dead man. Albert Einstein. The man who has lost the power of wonder is a dead man. When we are living life as a celebration, the way in which we approach others becomes truly intimate and heart-opening. This doesn't change when we are with our partner in the bedroom. We can open and feel the connection easily because we've spent our entire day in that same place. If we are, are, are overly used to being entertained by an outer force, we cannot know what it is like to engage in real intimacy and love. We may fear being fully seen and hide parts of ourselves we think are not acceptable. So we remain a spectator and end up watching our beloved from a very near distance and experience a connection which doesn't include our full heart. Living your life as a celebration is a radical way of living life. It means loving and enjoying ourselves so deeply that we are able to totally melt and merge with a partner who loves us. Being with someone that is not about pleasing the other nor pleasing yourself as, as it is about surrendering to the pleasure that consumes us completely. It's not about reaching a peak state of orgasm once or twice a week and then falling asleep feeling depleted. But that both partners are experiencing orgasm after orgasm and feel completely whole, fulfilled in love, and surrendered in bliss. When you're living your life as a celebration, you can truly make love with your partner. It becomes about raising your vibrations together. Creating a real multi-orgasmic healing experience can only happen as a team. Only when a couple is merged together mentally, emotionally, spiritually, can they reach one of the highest experiences of human, a human can have. By working together, we become one merged, living, breathing being. And from this state, we satiate our never-ending thirst for love. If we don't trust this merging, we cannot know the greatest love there is, and we'll always live in some form of misery. Merging is the only way to total freedom and truly liberating oneself from the ego. Through merging, we find that every moment in the celebration of this amazing existence exactly the way it is. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure that we all are, and the first thing, always relax the body. You know, when you wake, we open your eyes in the morning, do you think you're relaxed, that body's relaxed? How often that you, you just chatter, it's there, and then all this flood of thoughts come in. You ever, you ever, you ever paid attention to that? It, it's just, these thoughts just come banging in, just flooding in massively, and then you're off and running, right? How, how relaxed is your body? You know, some people will dream all night long and they wake up and they feel like they've never slept. And their bodies are not relaxed. So how do you really, what's, what is it, what's the, the key to relaxing the body? The now. Focusing your breath, focusing on the breath, easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth. Which is the now. The breath is the mouth. So when you do this, you still the ego mind, the subconscious mind, you still them because you leave them alone. And the mind chatter's gone, and the ego mind can't enter the now. And I think we all know why, because it wouldn't exist in the now. 
So focusing to be on the now is paramount for any one of us. It's also very important that we are gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves and that we're in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of purest, purest, eternal gratitude. Because some of us get hard on each other, or ourselves, right? You come down on yourself, and, you, you know, you don't, I just don't think that we, I, I, you know, intentionally, knowingly, but it's a habit some people get into, and they trash themselves, argue with themselves. And... It's imperative to be the opposite and to be in deep gratitude all the time. You see, this shifts the whole understanding. It shifts your body. And the body, it does have a tendency to relax when you do this. Now, the body that these bodies are in are like super magnetic sponges. They pull in everything 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 that the the ego mind can conjure up everything and then stores it in the subconscious mind this is we have these massive libraries each and every one of us do and believe it or not you know they're not your thoughts they're other people's you know, relatives, as that baby body you're in grows and grows and grows, and you, you, you're taking in everything. So just be careful. So you can identify it. On top of that, we've got tens of millions of thoughts flying by like clouds in the sky. And they're not ours either. They're programmed. They're everybody else's thoughts throughout existence on this planet. On it, in it, above it, and below it. Where do you think thoughts go? Okay. Some of us will take them and we'll move them into reality and experience them. But there's so many. It's like you're sitting there, and we all do this. We're in the now, right? And we find ourselves floating off. And we're somewhere else. And what we did is we grabbed onto one of those programs and started riding on it. So the thing is, is that we can acknowledge this and say, I'm going to focus on my breath, easy in, through the nose, easy out through the mouth, and I'll be in the now 3,000% of the time. And you will, which is every time. And, you know, you can, we, we enjoy the external physical world, but the real fun stuff is inside of us. And it's permanent. Everything outside of us is temporary permanency journey within temporary journey outside now picture in the body the body that you're in the God that you are in and in silence you will see seven balls of light they're going straight up from the spine, the, the tailbone, all the way to the top of the head. And these lights, right? On this plant, they're called chakras. Definition of chakra is wheel. These are wheels of light, spirit, spheric energy. We, the gods that we are in these bodies, are spirit, spheric energy, omnipotently powerful. Now, we flow through these bodies, and we know them right down the quantum court. It's just because of our illusion of disconnection with the gods we are in these bodies. We look at it and go, oh, no, they can't do that. But we will discover, as a civilization, our abilities as they begin to open up, that we are the heat, we are the power of healing. Now, if you were to be standing, in front of three paths 
and the and, and you're standing in the center one, which is the now. And the one on the left is the past, the one on the right is the future. And you look at them, just we're curious, right? And you notice that each one has these trees that have all the way down bordering them. They have formed a canopy. Kind of like a roof, so to speak. And these are gold and shimmering leaves and branches and bark of this tree. Now, the pathway is a brilliant emerald green flaming light. And it, it appears as grass. And they're all constructed this way, but you do notice that the one on the left pass is very worn. You notice this also with the future, the one on the right, very worn. And some of us, you know, all of us reminisce. We all have, we, we do this kind of, th thoughts will come in, memories, right? And something will trigger them, and something will happen, and we'll go, you know, oh, I remember this. That was so fun, and I had such a good time. So we'll go up into our library, subconscious mind. We'll open door, turn on the lights, and we will pick out some movies and some books and pictures. And then we'll sit in the easy chair, and we will watch the movies. read some of the books and look at some of the pictures. But we do that, but we don't stay there. We we pack up, put everything away, turn off the light, shut the door, and move forward in life. But there are some of us, and I don't believe it's conscious, I believe it's unconscious, that there are some of us that will go into that path and create damage and then we will take that past we will move it into a future that doesn't exist we will create that future from that past and we will relive that past in that future and we do it so often that we end up taking it into what Oblivion. We do it. We get to the point. Some of us, that's all we know. And that's just when we say, no matter what we do, we always end up here. Now, with, what about the future? We all want to know, most of us want to know the future. We want to know what's going to happen. What would you do if you could spin the wheels of time at will and accelerate your timeline into the future to see where you would be at. God, wouldn't that get boring? Might be a novelty at first. But we do. We want to know when things are going to happen. We want to know when we're going to have enough money to be happy in a new house or car, whatever it may be. We want to know. And to keep that vibrational high and to keep in the flow of the universe coming right, right, just saturating it, permeating it of abundance, prosperity. What's the more appealing? And if you were to discover this, you would never be motivated to go into the future. Because you would have all you needed in the now, right in the moment without projecting, without guessing, forcing, hurrying. So we are consciously aware. We, to a certain extent, we wouldn't be on this global guided meditation call if we were, if we were asleep. There's no way. Consciously aware means is that we know that we are of and from, of and from, okay, 
the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. So we know we're not the name, not, not the personality, not the character, not our status, not our belongings. We're the God. Pure, pure, deep, eternal love. Pure consciousness. And every step we take, because we are heaven on earth, heaven is not a place, that's the matrix trick, one of them, heaven is you. Kingdom of God is you. Source creator is you. Body is earth. Heaven on earth. Every step we take, we're creating paradise, literally. We're transforming this planet into a God planet paradise. And it glows. Because we shine our light. And our light is God force love light energy. It, it emanates from the gods that we are in these bodies. And think about this. There's 8 billion of us. And we aren't including all of the other inhabited forms that gods are in. We glow. When you look around the universe and you see all these other lights, and they compare like a, a lit candle in a dark room. Dim, dim, dim. Now some of us, some of us, and understand that when you direct your love, your, your light, it affects everybody that you direct it to. And not in a negative way. It affects everybody in a very positive way. And with that intention, you're changing people's vibrational frequency. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to say, hey, uh, look at me. I'm giving you life. Some of us, and it's saturating this planet in all life, the highest supreme form in the universe is and value. So we're God planet paradise that glows and some of us, some of us yet in this life may discover that when we decide to leave these bodies and we end up in the sacredness of space, We will know that we are the light. You're the light. You, you're God amidst that light. And why in the heck would we follow some other light that shows up? This is what, it's interesting how it works. Because, because the vile one's off this planet. Off world is. They enjoy it. So you won't follow the light. Matrix trap. Or if you do, this whole thing starts over again. You enter a baby body and it starts all over again. Now, there are parts of us, the gods that we are, that sound sweet. We deeply love them because they're parts of the gods that we are. But they don't participate. They're not awake yet. They won't wake up. They'll wake up in their own time. We have the other parts of us, the gods that we are, that are awake to a certain extent. So, obviously, we communicate with them. And this is all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. So many that, like in Googleplex, there's one Googleplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. These are trillions of Googleplexes from trillions of existences. 
Now this is the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. Ascended Masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, Amoria, Medantia, Pell, Thoth, Yahweh, Yeshua. All the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, are guarded beneath us. All of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. All the off-worlders, galactics, and celestials. Now, the Ascended Masters, they have send, ascended into physical form. They have mastered physical form. They have ascended out of physical form. And they are creating in pure consciousness in God form. We have ascended into physical form. We are in the process of mastering physical form. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creations. Now, the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, and the archetypes, they are a civilization vibrated at a different frequency than we do. But it doesn't mean that the gods in their bodies and the gods in ours are separate. We are one. Now, they've been, literally, we meet them, but it's not like, oh, I met an angel. You know, I'm meeting an angel right now. It's, it's after, usually after the fact that we interact with them, it can be a complete stranger. You just start up a conversation, feel real comfortable with them, and then you just go about your day. And then it dawns on you, that was, that was an angel. And then you feel bliss, or you experience bliss. And, and the message they give, which is in so many different ways, but it comes down to, isn't it absolutely magna, glorious, stupendous, spectacular that we are alive in these bodies? And it is. But we, unfortunately for us, we don't have a comparison because we've been zapped. So we lose our memory of who, of who and what we are. And so we spend each lifetime trying to rediscover that. And unfortunately, some of us have been spending tens of thousands of lifetimes and still haven't rediscovered it. See, the reason is, is that we lose our memory coming and going. Does that make any sense to any of us? Why? It's like being on a hamster wheel. I go there and I have all memories blank and I start over again. I, I can't draw on my past life or past lives to help me with this one, to not make the same mistakes over and over and over again, or experience experiences that I've experienced before. Why would I want to experience them again? So we spend the, the lives, the physical life, learning how to be in deep gratitude for these bodies that we're in, learning how to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves. And believe you me, you know, and this is another thing, you have a memory, but when you leave that, when you decide to leave that body, and you're, you don't know, you, 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 that, that, that emotion, that feeling, that experience that you have in the body fades quickly. So you don't know what it's like to eat an apple, to bite into a lemon, to smile or cry, to laugh. Have a nice dinner. Drink clean water. Breathe in spring air. Make love. Hold hands. Kiss. We don't do, you imagine that? We don't do any of that as the gods that we are. Now you see why we get so carried away with the physical form. And forget about the gods that we are within the physical form. We were all taught in separation on this, the civilization was constantly banging us, the separation illusions. So we're taught that trees are life. And in eventuality, the God in the tree is the life. The God sustains the tree, energizes the tree, the, the, the earth, 
feeds the tree, waters the tree. Remember this, how this works. Just like we, just like the bodies we're in. And so the God is able to experience the tree. It's no different than us. We rely on the, this body relies on the elementals in order to keep it running so that we can give it power so that we can experience it. It's like anything. Rock, leaf, bush, animals. Now, they can surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands or even the tens of millions because of the fact of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. And if you want them to do this, ask them. They'll be there in the blink of the eye and you'll be in bliss. Now, light energy beings. You know, there's lots. But because of the eyes we have with these bodies, we only see 1% of what is. So there's different light spectrum. There's red, infrared, violet, ultraviolet, different levels, green, blue. Now, there's many light energy beings that come from these light spectrum, different shapes, color sizes, forms, and configurations. We just don't see them. But there is a group that these bodies were in are highly dependent on part of this group. The fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur. Now ask your body that you're in. It's, and it's a reminder for us. And mind ourselves as much as possible so we stay in deep gratitude. It's like, body, can you, can, can you continue to sustain the God that I am within you without water, without air, without fire, without earth, without wood, without ether? No. I cannot. Then we as gods would be forced to leave these bodies. You see how important that these elementals are. No different than this planet is to a tree. How, re how re reliant the tree is to the planet, the earth. The, the air. The water. Not so much fire. The tree is only dependent on a certain area of the elementals. Now, we're all together. We always are. We're never separate. All of us, no matter if it's, a, it's 9 billion, billion light years away. We're all one. We're just different parts of God experiencing different things in different physical forms and beyond. Endlessly. Eternally. Now, the off-worlders, the galactics, the celestials, over a thousand species, civilizations travel through the solar system every day trillions throughout the universe is every day. Now we're familiar with a small group, Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Felines, Ader, Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilian, Golden Pyramid, Avion. This particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, our, our physical body evolution, our enlightenment, our ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love, and our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to grow, intensify, and expand. We immediately form a circle of light, white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This white fire emanates from the gods that we are, from the pure love that we're made of, and from 
and it's soaking, saturating, and permeating this planet, Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now, infinity and beyond. Every crack, every crevice, every nook, every cranny, everywhere. No escape. No escape from this love. It is the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. All lower dark matter, survival matter frequency is being evaporated from the planet. You can see this when you go into deep silence and you, through your heart mind, see this leaving the planet. And it is. It is an evaporation of pure evil from planet Earth. And you watch it all over the place. It's rising up and it's going up. And it is literally being vaporized by pure, deep, eternal love. Now, we begin to ascend above the planet. And we come in full contact immediately with an ocean of glitter. It's not like an ocean of glitter that we would kind of depict on this planet. It's much, much, much more advanced. So we, we, we give it our best shot to describe it. So we look at the fact is that... Uh, that Part of it is a grand finale master fireworks display, way beyond anyone we have on this planet. Grand finale laser light show display, and this phenomenal globe, mirrored globe, that reflects all light everywhere, 360 degrees. This one happens to be a trillion times bigger and a trillion times more intense. So we combine all those into one massive crescendo. And it comes very close to describing the ocean of glitter. Now we're curious, so we go to the reflective points, which are everywhere. And we notice these little tiny microscopic mirrors perfectly etched. We enter them. And then we discover that all of us, always, in one way, shape, form, or another, are teaching, learning, learning, teaching, or both, all the time for each other. See, when we get so distracted on the material, physical world, which we all, none of us are exempt from it, what happens? We forget who we are. We think we're out there. And we're not. We're in here. And we don't know what's in here. Can you imagine that? You could look at a dog, focus on the dog, and ask yourself what it would be like to be that dog. It's not a scary thing. It's not, and so for a moment, as, as you focus and you go into the now, and you're focused on your breath, in through, easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth, and you, you literally experience a glimpse of what it's like to be that dog, or any animal for that fact, or any object. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind the soul, the gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet, blue, purple, flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are within these bodies, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white flag. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe, inside and out, we are protected with the white fire armor. Nothing, nothing on this planet can compare to it. The white fire comes from the kingdom of God, the heaven, the God source, you in that body. And all of the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no demon attachment, no, no expectations, uh, no um, possessions, none of that. They, can, they can't come by us. With our vibrational frequency that high, they know they'll vaporize, so they stay away. We are permanently protected 24-7, infinity and beyond. But only you, only you, 
Only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, anger, fear, worry, stress, envy, hurriedness, revenge, dishonesty, manipulation, you will lower your vibrational frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor. Not so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then, then there's possibilities. There's possibilities of demon possession, attachments, and other things. Now, you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light. We created this double column of light. The first part of the column is the purple transmuting flame. This is a column that we... we created to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. We then are met with the second part of this column of light, the violet ray. This part of the column of light we created to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were. Sealing the breach in our white fire armor and restoring our vibrational harmony from the highest to the highest high, deepest to the deepest, deepest, purest to the purest, purest. Eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we, the gods in these bodies, created to remind us all that we are the sun. We are the sunlight. We are the rain and the rainbows. We are the sunsets, the sun rises. We are the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. We are the trees and the forests. We are the skies and the clouds. We are the mountains. We're everything. Everything is us. Now, we've been taught through separation that when you see something like a sunset or sunrise, ocean front or mountain view, you immediately say, isn't that beautiful? But in natural state, as the gods that we are, knowing that the separation has always been an illusion and it has been diminished and eliminated, then you would say, that is the God that I am. That is the God that I am. Now we continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form if we're carrying physical form and we hover effortlessly above it. The reason we do this is because we can. And also, it's really fun. We come in immediate contact with a massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower, larger than the solar system and beyond. And in the center of the tower, we discover this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. And it seems to be surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that go to infinity and beyond. This creates a super massive, misty, cloudish, super bright light. And it's flickering and glittering and flashing. And it is absorbed through our heart minds like a warm embrace that never ends. Now we discovered that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes well-being, gratitude, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, peace, joy, bliss, 
tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, massive abundance. And we discover that all of this is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. Now, at the top of this column, we design it so the golden ocean can come cascading down, 360 degrees, infinity and beyond. As it's doing right now. What is it? What is the golden ocean? It's pure, deep, eternal love, the highest of the highest high frequencies, flooding this planet, in, on, above, and below. Now, we're drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is a drop, drops of the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. And we see our meditative sphere. It's at center circle. We all created this sphere over four years ago. It, it houses over, well over 1,800 of our meditations in perpetual motion. These meditations continue to intensify, expand, and grow. Imagine that. Hundreds of millions of us, consciously aware to a certain extent, focused on this planet and its complete liberation from pure evil. Every day, seven days a week, sometimes twice a day, without fail. Every day. And bathing this planet, saturating and permeating it, infinity and beyond. The higher the collective consciousness of this planet, which we're a part of, the gods that we are, the higher it decides to increase its frequency, vibrational frequency, the lesser and lesser and lesser chances of any lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies can exist here. It's the whole purpose. So that we all experience joyous lives. So that we're here to celebrate our lives, not to suffer them. And we've decided as a collective consciousness that it's time that we do that. And that's what we're witnessing. You can tap into this anytime. This sphere can be seen, heard, and felt, and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond it forever. That's why it continues to intensify and it continues to grow and expand. Look at something in nature as if it were for the very first time. Maybe a tree, a bug, a rock flower, whatever it is. Just gaze into it and through it. This will help you see the purpose of life. As you stare into the flower or the tree, open your eyes and your being to experience something of the beyond. Receive the pure nature into your being. Gaze into it for a long enough time until you let it fully merge into you. I'll join you in the meditation. I'll return to close this out.
Take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Be still. Deep inside your being is a powerful awareness that is very awake, present, and aligned with the isness for today. Sink into and surrender to that which is always present, always listening, always watching, and always aware. It is an experiencing. Allow your awareness to guide you through whatever experiences you have in your body and mind and trust that it is all you will ever, ever, ever need. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the night, the following morning. And we will return here Friday, March actually April 1st, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Eastern for a reverse aging health call with Michael Thomas. 